All right, you ready? Yes. My name is Adarata Mizero and I'm 26 years old. I'm originally from Burundi. I came to New Zealand in the late 90s, early 2000s with my parents and baby brother. And my parents had fled Burundi for political and civil unrest reasons and came to New Zealand through the refugee quota system. Coming to New Zealand, I was with my parents, my younger brother, and we had some extended relatives on my dad's side that I guess it sort of helped having that community to come to and those connections of family here in New Zealand. Uh, but my parents basically left everybody behind, everything that they knew, my grandparents, their siblings, their nieces and nephews, basically everybody was left back in Burundi. There are a couple of other families that maybe were left in Kenya and Tanzania, but for the most part, it was just my parents and me and my brother. Burundi is a beautiful tropical country. It's landlocked, it's lush, it's green, it's very, very hot and humid. It's loud, it's bustling, especially in the main cities of the different provinces. Um, I really wish New Zealand had more of like that cultural sense of community in the way that I've been raised at home and the way that I've seen with my relatives and extended family and friends. Um, it's, it's a sort of, I guess, a feeling more so than anything physical. I feel like one of the main things that I've heard through conversation and feedback around the topic of refugees in New Zealand is that people don't necessarily feel welcomed or fully supported through the resettlement process, especially finding houses, finding jobs, trying to understand how this country works and the culture and the behavior of peoples. I reckon there are a lot of people that struggle with that learning and really building a strong foundation when they first come here. The advice that I'd give uh, families from refugee backgrounds is to really do their best to keep their culture, whatever that looks like for them, alive as much as possible, practicing their customs and language, uh, just because you are in a new country where it's not the same sort of culture that you've grown up with, um, doesn't mean that you shouldn't try and keep and hold on to what you already have. And I think that's something so special to, to keep. World Refugee Day is a chance to sort of reflect on the refugee journey. It can look so different for so many different people, depending on where they're from, the reasons why they fled their countries and all of that. I also think it's a chance to reflect and remember that there are a lot of people that are still stuck in refugee camps in that state of wanting to leave and flee and really look at what we're doing as, you know, communities, as countries, as, as cultures around the world, what we're doing to support those people that are still in those states of unrest, of wanting to leave and flee, and they don't, haven't found that safety yet that a lot of others have been fortunate to have. When it comes to like the label or the term refugee, I think it's important to understand what that means. There are different words and definitions for refugees, for forced migrants, immigrants, it's really important to understand the difference between what those words are and how to use them correctly. I myself am no longer a refugee. My family resettled a long time ago, but I am a former refugee. I do have come from a refugee background and that's something that I do bring up in conversation. I don't feel any shame or embarrassment about that. But coming from a refugee background, it has actually informed a lot of the work that I've done. Kind of unknowingly, I've built a career in the community space um, as a community worker, working for various organizations, mostly nonprofits to start off with um, when I was about 18, 19, 20. And then now I work for a government agency currently. They tend to be people that come from you know minority backgrounds or minority communities that do need a lot of support here in New Zealand, that still need a lot of support, even people that have been here for 10, 20, 30 years in New Zealand. It's been really, really special to use the stories and perspectives and experiences that I have and that I've grown up around to inform how I work and who I work with and the positive impact that I can hopefully make within these communities in New Zealand.
One thing I guess I would love to see change with the refugee journey and the resettlement process here in New Zealand would be that initial six weeks, six months, 12 months, two years, how it really looks like to support people for a longer period of time to really resettle and build strong foundations in New Zealand. Um, there have been studies done that show, I guess, the negative impacts and the negative experiences that people have had resettling um, and how it does affect them individually, but also in, in a family and, and in a wider community sense. I think that the government and I think that various organisations that have those relationships could do a lot better in that initial first few years that people come and resettle here. What I've noticed from the work that I've done from my own family and relatives that have resettled when I was a little bit older and a little bit more aware of my surroundings is that there is so much struggle, there's so much that people have to overcome so much that they have to deal with resettling. So it's not just coming to a new country and learning the language and, and the culture. There's the job stuff, there is the school, there's the socializing, making friends and building their own communities, finding their own interests. It's, it's not made easy at all. Whether you've got a community and family that are already here to, to, to meet you, or if you come here by yourself and it's just you or you just you and your parents and siblings, it's hard. It's, it's very, very hard. And I think there are systems that could be put in place or systems that could be changed to make that experience a lot better than it is currently. I think that former refugees in New Zealand are definitely making an impact on New Zealand society in various ways. There have been many stories, I'm sure you can look up online and see, like really positive things, um, how they've positively integrated into various communities across New Zealand, how they've supported with the, in, you know, financially, in a community sense, different ways that they've, you know, positively impacted New Zealand. I think that there is, I guess, a limit to how much they can contribute in some ways. When you look at the qualifications that many people do have that they can't actually use and exercise in New Zealand for various reasons. I think it's, it's definitely something to be looked at, at how that system works and how qualifications and stuff can really be included so that people can use the amazing skills and knowledge and uh, expertise that they have that many of them currently can't use or haven't been able to use for a very, very long time because of the way the system is set up here. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for having me. <laughs>